Good morning, church. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to welcome you all to this special service today. Resurrection Sunday and Happy Easter to all of you. Amen? Amen. 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 What a day. What a blessing. This is our first Easter under Hope Community Church. Our first uh, resurrection to celebrate as a church. We move together. We praise the Lord. For his presence always with this church. Hallelujah. My name is Eric. I'm the pastor here. If this is your first time to worship with us, especially on this particular day, we have extra welcome for you and we have a gift for you. Uh, before you leave, please, uh, we have a gift of a Bible. You can take it home. That's a wonderful gift. We are just giving you Jesus in the Word. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have a couple announcements to share with you. Uh, just, uh, uh, just to remind you that we do have fitness going on every, um, every Monday and Tuesday and uh, Wednesday at, uh, at 10.30. Please join them. And we have tutoring program too. Uh, tutoring where we help our kids. If you, want, you feel like uh, we have a calling to tutors, uh, to tutor a kid, please uh, see me and Pastor Nancy. We can help you how to get involved. Uh, on Wednesday at 5.30, uh, from 5.30 to uh, 7 o'clock. We have also a meal in between. And uh, also Bible study, we are back. Uh, please join us. Bible study every Thursday at 6.30. And then uh, what else again? I think uh, we have prayer group. I mean prayer. Prayer, join us again for prayer on Wednesday on a Saturday, on a Thursday, midnight, if you are up at midnight, you don't get a sleep, please just join us and pray with us. Uh, that's another, another opportunity to pray. And also, we do have actually every other Thursday Zoom prayer. You just stay home and you join us on Zoom. If you need a Zoom link, please see me. I will share the Zoom link with you every other Thursday. We do that. And... Uh, we have a connection card. If this is your first time, please uh, put, uh, we have connection card in our pews, just your name, your uh, phone number, email addresses, and that your pastor will reach out to you. Uh, we are so blessed to have you here if this is your first time. Uh, those who are watching online as well, we want to welcome you as well. And you can send us a message as we have done in the past. Uh, it's always good to make even some comment on Facebook. May God bless us as we come together and praise our living God. Resurrection Sunday. Sunday is here. Amen. Uh, on, on a Friday when we had a good Friday, um, uh, folks uh, uh, came to me and said, Pastor, can we also have the prayer printed? So if you need the prayer that we prayed on Friday printed, you can take one already there. I put some prayer printed there. You can take it home for good Friday. We prayed on Friday. I think that's all, that's all, all announcement I have. And uh, just uh, one of the blessed announcements I want to share with you because of uh, my sis, our sister in Christ, the chain, uh, chain to be leaving us. Uh-huh, that's, uh -huh. I love that, I knew that. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. She has been a blessing to us. Uh, she's done with school at MSU and uh uh, she's leaving at the end of uh, April. So um, um, next week you are going to receive an email coming from the SPRC chair uh, that with a love, give, a love, love gift. <laughs> we're going to make sure we collect a love gift for our sister in Christ chain. And we are going to celebrate the cake at the end of the month in April. So she'll be with us the whole month of April. Praise the Lord. We do have already. She is so blessed to us. You know, this is really a blessing. That as she's leaving, she's all, she brings also another person talented like her to replace her. Praise the Lord. So we are so, um, that's a blessing. That's ministry. Amen. She loves this just so much. She loved this just so much. She said, I will do my best to make sure you have someone I mean, someone who's going to cover me. So we have the person already that's going to replace the chain. That's a blessing. So I consider to come on the, the end of the month of April to celebrate 
uh, we are going to have a cake together with her. So thank you, Chen. We're going to celebrate and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. Uh, let, us, let us take this moment and pray. And we are going to next week. That's when we're going to talk about African University trip. So we, got, we do have another month, another week to go. Let us pray together. We are a church uh, with people from different parts of the world. You can pray in any languages, in Swahili, in English, uh, French. You can do it. But the good thing is God hears all the prayers. Amen? All right, let us pray. Let us pray. As we pray, ask God to, uh, to do a resurrection in your life. There are things in our lives that need to be resurrected. Peace needs to be resurrected. Joy needs to be resurrected. Some of you assume, you know, uh, those things, not, they don't need to be resurrected. They have to stay down. Pride, uh, uh, flesh desires, they have to stay, remain down. But the things we need to move on as Christians, joy, peace, you know, kindness, those spirits, they've been dead for so long. Let us pray. So, God, I need peace to be resurrected. I need faith. To be resurrected me somehow you just, oh, I don't have faith I don't. today is a day of resurrection so pray and ask God to help you amen amen all right let us pray together hallelujah hallelujah holy holy are you God we come together in one accord as a church to give all the glory and the honor to you. You are indeed the creator, the sustainer, the blesser, the protector, the redeemer, the savior. You are the provider. You are God by yourself. We give praise and honor unto you because everything that God has been revealed unto us through your word, God, today we are celebrating. Without the resurrection, holy God, we cannot be who we are. We praise you for the resurrection. We praise your living name for your son. What he did on the cross. And his presence again alive today, Lord Jesus Christ. Make the whole world know, God, you are a lovely father. Lord, as we celebrate today, I pray, open the floodgate of heavens and pour out your Holy Spirit according to your word. In the book of Zechariah, you said it is not by force, by strength, it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray, oh Lord Jesus Christ, the same spirit that, oh God, allowed Jesus Christ to come from the grave. I pray for that spirit now in the name of Jesus Christ into our lives. Let that spirit, Christ the Lord, allow us, Father God, to experience Hallelujah, resurrection of peace, resurrection of joy, resurrection of faith, resurrection, Father God, of obedience, resurrection of walking under the kingdom of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful, God, as we celebrate, hallelujah, a day like this. So for the first time under the, your name, the Christ the Lord, you have given unto us, use us, Lord Jesus Christ, as a church to speak to the community and the whole world. We are the resurrected church in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for the resurrection hope in Jesus' holy name. We give praise and honor unto you this morning in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus Christ, whatever we brought in our heart this morning, Father, may you, God, reveal your presence in every situation in our lives in Jesus' holy name. Bless us as we come together Touch us, reveal your glory, hallelujah, through us and with one another in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for a nation in Jesus' holy name to know Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Christ, to let the power of the resurrection, Father, to drive us back unto you in Jesus' name. We pray for the city of Lansing. We pray for the state of Michigan. We pray for the whole world to know Jesus Christ in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, holy God. We bless you. We worship you, Holy Father. Let your presence be here. Praise you, Holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. 
who are struggling, God, right now, spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally. We speak the resurrection power into their lives in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, God. We bless you. We worship you, King of kings, the Lord of lords. In Jesus' holy name, we pray together the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for us. Will you please stand and join me for our call to worship? Run from fear and darkness. Hope is on the move. Run to tell the world Christ is risen. Do not be afraid. Jesus has conquered death. Christ is risen. Let us join together our opening hymn, number 514, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus.
remaining standing, let us go to our Apostle Creed together. Let us read what we believe. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I heard you doing this. Oh, 
Let's do it again. We are doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, the way you do it, that's how your heart also clapping hand. You do it for the God, for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, uh, this time uh, we are going to move on. We are going to take time to uh, uh, just uh, the dancers. They can come up here. Uh, we are going to the children will pray for them the second service. There's no problem about that. Amen. I'm going to invite the dancers to come up here. All right. Okay. You want me to move this way? That's it. is always the follow yeah. I 
Double, double, heavenly blessings that he might receive. Ah, yeah. God, your grace and mercy is always there for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, dancers. May God bless you. All right. We are good. We are good. I'm checking my time. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy, we are so thankful today for your grace, your love, your presence in our lives. Holy God, pray, open the floodgate of heaven. And send your Holy Spirit this morning again. To open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear your word. And open our heart to receive your word. God, as I stand before your children, may you be increased as I decrease. For the glory of your name. We praise you. Jesus Christ. Jesus holy name. Amen. All right. God bless us. Gonna share this word. If you don't know, uh, maybe you may uh, if you uh, may you know some pastors, you can ask them. For me, since I started uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, there are sermons that are always like a challenge to me to come up with and listening to the Lord. The Christmas and Easter, um, those are sermons that are always like part of my life as it, de it demands a lot, amen? I know the reason why, because you just wait for so long to come with that message. But when you go along every day and preach the gospel, God always speaking through you. But Easter sermon and uh, Christmas sermon from my own experience as your pastor, has been really uh, sermons where I demand a lot from me. Amen? But I'm going to share this word the Lord has put in my heart for all of you this morning. Whether you receive it or not, but it's coming from the Lord. We are all called to listen to the Lord, Jesus Christ. Today our title is The Death and Resurrection of Christ. In other words, what I'm talking about is the power of Jesus' death and resurrection. The whole world is celebrating today about Jesus' resurrection. And what does it mean to us as a believer in Christ? Folks, Calvary is God's divine reach that says, I still want you. Satan and hell cannot have you. That's Calvary all about. My brothers and sisters in Christ, because of the cross and what Jesus did on the cross, death is just an incident now. It is not a final state for us as believers in Christ. Before the cross and the resurrection, death was the final state when people died. They went, uh, they went to a compartment of hell and called Hades, H-A-D-E-S. It was a holding place. You could not get out, but the Bible teaches that when Jesus died and went to the grave and into hell, no longer is death a final statement, but it is an incident. 
it is for a moment. Death is for a moment for us believers in Christ Jesus. Amen? What a joy. It's just for a moment. And you go and be with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no fear of the hold of death on our lives. If you do not believe, I put it in this way. If you do not believe in the resurrection, you will not believe in the rapture. Because the Bible teaches us that God raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same Bible, not another Bible. It's the same Bible that teaches us that the church will be raptured. So if you believe in the resurrection, you better believe also in the rapture. Amen? We have to believe that. In the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 1, says the same power that raised Christ from the dead will quicken our mortal bodies as well. Another scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 17. If you have an, anyone in the grave today, like some of us, we have, we have my daddy, I have, I have my sister uh, if I have them already, those who are, uh, when that trumpet sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the Bible says those who are living, that's you and I, and remain will be caught up together with our loved ones to meet the Lord in the air, celebrating, praising the living God. What a joy. I'm looking forward to that. If you don't believe in the resurrection, you can't believe in the rapture. But it is going to happen. It's going to happen. Now listen to me, folks. Death is a separation from the body. Revelation chapter 20, verses 14, there are two, there are two deaths, if you don't know that. There are two deaths. Listen to me. There is a... There is a first death for lost people to go into eternity. What does that mean? It means this. You die the first time. Are you with me? Stay with me and be, I mean, stay with me. <laughs> you die the first time. And that is when your soul leaves your body. But there is a, there is a second death. And it is when you are separated from God for eternity. That is second death. It is when Jesus says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, 23, he said to the people who do not know him as their Savior, depart from me. Depart from me. I never knew you. And at that moment, the Bible says this is the second death. This is the second death in the book of Revelation. And now, here is the key. Listen to this. I put it on the screen. Here is the key. If you have only been born once, one time, you have to die twice. But if you get born a second time, meaning your natural birth and being born again, you only die one time. One time. You only die one time. So if you are born one time, you die to death in the natural, and then the separation from God. But if you have been born again, <laughs> I love this, born again, you only die one time. One time. Your soul leaves your body and you go to be with the Lord Jesus because of what Jesus did on the cross and in the grave. Because of what he did. I'm thankful today for what Jesus did. Amen? I'm thankful today. I'm thankful today. Jesus got up. Jesus got out. Jesus wants to come into your life. And if Jesus got up and G uh, he, got, he got out and he comes in, your, in you, you can't stay down for three days. For three days you can't. 
You can't do that. You are not supposed to stay down because your Savior is up. When he's up, I'm up. When he's up, you are up. Amen? Yeah. If, uh, today is just like uh, one day, the second day. I'm, I promise you the third day you'll be up and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I was called to be, God, to be, to be glad and rejoice in it. You cannot stay three days down because your, your Savior is up. When Jesus comes in you, you won't stay down. We need to understand that when Jesus get up, Jesus actually exhausted sin. I put in that, exhausted sin, power to dominate in us. In other words, Jesus defeated sin and he defeated death terror to hold us up. We do not have to be afraid of anything anymore. Not of dying and not even of anything in this world. You know what? Because by the God has already spoken it in the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 8, 35. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Either death. Amen? Nothing. In the book of Hebrew. Hebrew 8. 12. Their sins... I will not remember. Hold on. The one who said, I will never leave you, forsake you, and nothing can separate us. He will walk you through and even into the next life. He will be there for you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. For you, that, that is the message of the cross, and the resurrection. Jesus will be there for you always. That's the message of resurrection. I want to tell you what Jesus did by going to the cross and dying and also risen again. I want to teach you something this morning. Do you have a pen or a pencil? Write it down. Write it down. It's going to help you. I'm going to teach you. Jesus by going through the cross and dying and being risen again, it teaches three things I'm going to teach you today. Number one, Jesus removes our transgression. Amen? Jesus removes our transgressions. From your account, what does that mean, Pastor Eric? It means... They are word for sins in the Old Testament. And these are the word when you read the Old Testament, you come across to this two word. Transgressions and iniquities. All right? There is a big difference between those two words. And you need to understand it. We need to understand it. An iniquity is an inward, inside motivation that drives you towards sin. And transgression is an outward action. The word transgression comes from the word trespass. T-R-E-P-S-S. -S. Transgression is when, it is, is when it goes from something you think about into your, uh, uh, into, into, in an outward action. Are you being tempted to do it? So another way of saying it, it is iniquity. Iniquity or sin start inside, in your heart. But transgression is in your hands. That's transgression. You do in your hands. Transgression is what you do. Iniquity is an attitude. And transgression is the action. Are you with me? Yeah, please stay with me. Today you're going to learn something. That's what happened with the Pharisees. Who boast themselves about the transgression. They will go to Jesus and say, how did they not do this and that? They were saying, we did not commit transgression, sir. But Jesus, you know, is Jesus. Amen. Wouldn't let him off the hook because he knew the inside. Jesus knows the inside of your heart and my heart. He knew the inside. They were rotten. They were mean. They were ugly. 
There were people who hurt one another in the inside. So he said, you widow shop adultery. You have said, as John 8, 17, he said, all right, if you have never done it before, if you have never committed adultery, here is a stone, can you stone that woman? And they were, mm. They never, they never did it. Jesus said, I see you haven't done the transgression adultery, but let's look inside of you. And when it does, Jesus said in the book of Matthew 5, 28, if you look on a woman to lust after her, you have committed what? Adultery. They thought they would get off uh, that way, but... Uh, Watch this, Jesus is so powerful and he was so exact in his death. That's why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, he reminded us and said he was wounded. Watch the wording. For our what? Our transgression. What is a wound? It is an outward bleeding. If you are wounded, you have the outward bleeding. And what is a transgression is also an outward act of sin. Amen? It is the action. Jesus was wounded. He took blood on his body for our outside sin. He did that. And when we went in the book of the same book, Isaiah 53, 5, he was bruised. What is bruising? It is eternal bleeding. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. Amen? The inside, the hidden things that we do have, each and every one of us. He did that. He did that for that, for, uh, for us to be free. He did that. But here is the beauty of what he did on the cross. He completely cleans you inside and outside. Hallelujah. Not only of this that you did, of what you did, but of things that you will think about and you will do even in the future. He did that already. He cleans you inside and out. Jesus cleans me inside and out on the cross and the resurrection. Not only that, the Bible says he removed your transgression. I don't know if you just got what I'm, I said. I'm not talking about one day. I'm talking about right now and when God looks at you, you have already done it, your transgression and your iniquities. Amen? Amen? He sees all of your transgression inside and through the blood of his son. God says, I have removed your transgression. That's number one. Number two. Mm -hmm. I love that. He remember your sin no more. Hey, people, I like, but people love that. Hey, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, let me tell you something. All right. He remember your sin no more. This is why I love the Bible. That's why I love it. This is an even way more remarkable because what he did on the cross. God said in the book of Isaiah 43, 25, he says, this, If I even I am it that blows uh, blows out your transgression to remember your sin, what? No more. In the book of Hebrew 8, 12, their sins will not remembered. I love that. Now, sometimes we say God forgot all our sin. No, it never does say that. He forgets. Because if God forgot all the sins that, uh, that we committed, that would be about half of our lives. Are you with me? Let me tell you what God does. God does not forget. He does not. But the good thing is, listen to what God says. I will remember. I will remember. What is the meaning of remembering? 
It is to recall or to bring up for use against you. Wow. God said, I know, listen to this, I know you did it, but I will never remember it. In other words, what God is saying is this, it will never be used against you again because of what my son did on the cross when he rose from the grave. It will never be used against you. So turn to your neighbor and say this word. Turn to your neighbor. If you don't have a neighbor, turn around and say to your neighbor and say this word. God has removed your transgression and he remembered them no more. Can you say that? God has removed your transgression and you'll never... Amen. When you say that it's hot, actually it's call you actually today to even thank God and even to make you a worshiper. When you say something like that, it makes you even to go to church and praise the Lord every day. Hallelujah. Because of what he did. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Worthy. If that, if, if that were not enough, God does one more thing. The last one is this. He releases you from your iniquities. Amen? He does that. He has the good news. He releases us from our iniquities. He has to do with being set free. He has to do with the, he can save you from that weakness. We are so weak in our lives because he's, he knows our weakness. God knows. He knows our strength. He knows our weakness. He says, I have the power through my shed blood to release you from the addiction, to release you from the pain, and to release you from the past. It is what Jesus did when he suspended on the cross. He did that. I have the power to do that. So now in closing, in closing I want to give you two quick, actually there were many, there are more than two, but I, because of time I said let me go with two. If you need a third one, you can call me, I will explain that to you, or you can stop by, I will let you know. I want to teach you, I said let me go with two because I want to release you to go and celebrate, amen? Alright, let me go with this two. In closing, there are two things. That the resurrection shows us in the Old Testament. Many of you, you look at the Bible, you said, ah, you know, uh, the Old Testament is just the Old Testament. Let me tell you, until you believe all of it, amen? I'm going to show you that the, the resurrection power was revealed already in the, in the Old Testament, amen? I'm going to show you. Number one, I'm going to be quick. Here we go. The story about Abraham. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, 11, 1 to 12, Abraham and Isaac, Abraham is told by God to take his only son, Isaac. And the Bible says in the book of John 3, 16, his only son. God so loved the world, he did what? He gave us his only son. And Abraham had his only son. And God said, I need the only son. And the same God in the New Testament as I'm giving you my only son who's going to save you. Amen? Listen to what happened now. Take Isaac on the mountain and sacrifice him to me. Listen to me. With these graphic details, the Bible said, Isaac the little boy. Actually, Isaac was not a little boy like some little boys we have in our church. Isaac was 17 years old. He's not a little boy. And he was dealing with this man 100 years old. He can push him like that, over like that, go down. Do you agree with me? Isaac was 17 years old with a 100-year-old guy. You can't push a 17 years old who said, I'm not going anywhere. 
I'm not going anywhere. And then by the, the Bible says, Isaac, Abraham told Isaac the son, put the wood on his back. He did that. And the Bible said in Genesis 22 that they climbed the mountain. I've got a picture there. Yeah. They climbed the mountain. It was three days. Remember, it was not a one-day journey. It was a three days journey. Read your Bible. Three days journey. Listen carefully. In the mind of the father Abraham, the son was dead for three days. That is exactly what God, the Father in heaven, had to go through. In God, the Father's mind, he, he saw Jesus' son carrying wood uphill that cross. For three days, Jesus was dead in the mind of the Father. When he gets to the top, Somebody says, you know, Abraham, you know, uh, maybe somehow Abraham pushed Isaac. No, he never pushed Isaac. It was Isaac himself when Abraham gave instruction to, uh, Abraham gave instruction to Isaac, lay down. He did it. Isaac never, Abraham never pushed Isaac. Go, 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 go. No, he did it by himself. The same thing with Jesus Christ. Jesus laid down on the cross. By himself. To save you and me. Amen. No man. Jesus actually said this. No man can take my life. Because I have a power. The book of Matthew 26. 53. I can call 10,000 angels. He could have done that. I can call 10,000 angels. I lay down my life just like Isaac lay down. And when the knife was raised by Abraham, suddenly God sent an angel and said, Do not do it. There is a substitute for you, for him. And the lamb was there. That's the picture of resurrection right there. It's a beautiful picture of the resurrection. Watch Isaac. The son of Abraham went to the mountain to die. After all that was over, he walked off the mountain of death. Three days later, very much alive. That's the, the picture of resurrection. Another one. Here's another one. One day, the disciples came to Jesus and said, do some miracles. And Jesus said in Matthew uh, chapter 16, 4, a, a wicked, he said, a wicked generation look for signs. But if you were God to have a sign, just here it is a sign. As Jonah went into the belly of the fish for three days and came back out again, the son of man, Jesus Christ will go into uh, that suffering on the earth, but on the third day, it will come back again to life. Amen? Jonah was told by God to go and take the message of judgment to Nineveh. He did not like those people anyway. <laughs> so you could not go. He said, no, nah, I, I don't want to go to Africa. I don't like African. I don't want to go to America. I don't like American. I'm not going anywhere. So God said, well, really? I'm going to show you that I'm God. So what happened? Joshua, he went to the opposite direction, and then the fish swallowed him. And for three days, he was, he was in hell. For three days, he was in the fish, the fish stomach. He was in hell. But watch this. I love Jonah chapter 2, verse 10. The fish. I love that. Beat him up. Now he goes, he goes to, uh, to Nineveh like God told him before with, uh, uh, with, well, you know, with seaweed all over him. I could see Jonah smelling bad. And he could not even stand it and say, it's all right, I'm going, I'm going. I'm you are smelling, Jonah. Jonah, you are smelling but it's all right. When God is on you, they don't feel the, you, can, you can't feel the smell at all. 
when he got there, he preached in that place for 40 days to repent, and salvation is a gift and grace. Notice something. Jonah changed his message. God did not tell him to do that. He did, he did, not, he, he did it on his own because the, resurrection, the resurrected men do not preach judgment. They preach mercy. If you are truly resurrected with the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot judge. You preach mercy. Amen? That's what happened with Jonah. If you read the story, change now. Repent. <laughs> Jonah is saying, I'm giving you only 40 days to get your act together. Now I'm resurrected from the fish after three days. Now if the old me, if the old me Jonah could have showed up now, I'm telling you my message will be a judgment message. But now I'm resurrected. I have a good news for you. Repent and God loves you. Amen? He went on. Here's the good news. A resurrected man and his message is, now, is, a message, is not a message of judgment. His message is a message of mercy. And I love you. I will forgive you. I will restore you. And all I need you to do is what? Repent. I got out. I want to get in your life. That's Jesus Christ. I got out. I want to get in your life. Just repent. What are you going to do with Jesus Christ today? What are you going to do, what are you going to do today with Jesus Christ? If you were born twice, you will only die once. But if you have, you have only been born once in the natural and you have never been born again, you are going to die twice. You are not only going to be separated from the body, but you'll be separated from God. From God. That's the message of resurrection. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation, folks. Do you know what Jesus wants to do for you? He wants to remove your transgression today. He wants to never remember them, meaning never allow them to be used against you again. Jesus wants to do that today. Jesus wants to release you from addiction. Jesus wants to release you from pride. Jesus wants to release you from flesh desires. And wants to release you from weakness. He wants to give you strength. Jesus wants to do it today. What are you going to do with Jesus? He wants you to run to mercy seat. And Jesus is the mercy seat. Amen. Jesus is the mercy seat. Jesus, I put it this way. Jesus wants uh, want you to know today that he was wounded for your transgression and bruised for your iniquities. And by his trap that you are healed, your marriage is healed, your family is healed, your future life is healed by his resurrection. <laughs> Amen. He's healed. Jesus Christ never come where he's not invited. I heard people say God is everywhere. And by the way, we cannot put God everywhere. He put himself there. But the good news is, Jesus never came where he's not invited. We have to invite Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen? Amen? Folks, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and it was the day on the campus Africa University where we are going, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I remember I did, I did so for three reasons. I put it on the screen, please. I needed a friend, a good friend who reminded me and said, you are wrong. That is not right. 
I needed a best friend, Jesus. And the second one, I needed forgiveness. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And the third one, I needed a future. And Jesus gave me all the three. Amen? And he can do it the same to you. Amen? He can give you, he can do the same to you. You just need to invite him in your life. You, you need a friend? He's there. You need to be forgiven? He's there. You need to have the future? He's there. He can give you the future. My brothers and sisters, I never would have dreamed where, when I was lost, but one day God will use me to preach his message. I never thought about that. One day I will preach the gospel, but he gave those to us and me. Jesus has a plan for you and a future for you according to Jeremiah 29, 11. I know I knew you. And some of you have been missing it. But today God is calling you home. God is calling you come home. Come back to the cross. Come running to the mercy seat. Come back. It is not here to judge you. It's here to call you. Come to the mercy seat. Come home, my children. Come home. I'm here for you. He's here to give you mercy. He is a resurrected man. And he has a message of mercy for all of us from now on. This is the power of death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. Amen? Come on. Come to the cross. Because I did it for you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to invite you. We are, going to, we are moving from uh, the message to the closing hymn. Hallelujah. And then uh, the offering. We are going to collect the offering as you go. You can put your offering in the place. I do believe that you brought offering for the Lord Jesus Christ on this particular day, Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Uh, if, when, when, when you leave the offering in your, you forgot in your wallet something, the Holy Spirit reminds you, go back, go back, go back and bring your offering. Those who are watching online, you do the same thing. It's not me, it is the Spirit of Christ through Resurrection. Said, oh, Eric, you don't do that. Go back and do it. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand up, folks. We have to rejoice. We are, going to, we are going to sing this closing hymn. Those who are watching online, today is Resurrection Sunday. Even if we are beyond time, praise the Lord. We're going to sing together. We are going to sing the old verses today. And I want you to sing like as, as, as a resurrected child of God. Amen. If you are resurrected indeed, sing. And we are going to pray after singing. If you are one of the person here this morning, don't look around and say, somebody, no. If you want to come home, the Lord Jesus Christ today, I'm going to invite you. You're going to raise up your hand at the end of the music. You're going to raise up your hand. We're going to pray together. We're going to pray for you. Just raise your hand where you are. Where you, are. you don't have to come. You just raise up your hand. We're going to pray for you. Even those who are watching online, if you want to come home to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to do the same on the screen. You do the same. We are going to pray for the power of resurrection in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sing together the closing hymn. Hallelujah.
Amen? Because he lives, my brothers and sisters in Christ. If you are one of the, if you are one of the child of God, you feel like I need to come home. I need to come home. I need to be resurrected. I want to invite you to raise up your hand wherever you are. Raise up your hand. Hallelujah. We're going to pray together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our precious God, of any Father, holy and living God, we give all the glory and the honor unto you today. Holy Jesus, here we are before the throne of grace. We are coming home. Father God, I lift up your children in the name of Jesus Christ as they lift up their hands toward heaven. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, let them, God, begin to experience home. Let them experience, Lord Jesus Christ, from now on, they experience the heavenly kingdom home. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them experience the mercy seat in Jesus' holy name. Lord, oh God, receive them because of your mercy seat. I give praise and honor unto you today for what they've done and for what you have done in Jesus' holy name. Bless us, oh God, as a church together as we come home to the mercy seat. In Jesus' holy name, we pray together and we say amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God really bless you. Let's receive benediction now. <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. All right. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. In Christ, remember to leave your offering. Praise the Lord.